It's good to be with you guys again. My name is Brad Hill, and today we're going to look at the first part of James chapter 4. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with verse 1. It says, What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? And right out of the gate, James is trying to deal with conflict here. Not, not just the conflict that we can have with one another, but the conflict that we have within ourselves, which in turn causes that conflict with one another. And he points out here that it is our own passions, our own desires, that causes these conflicts. It's essentially our will for what we want rather than God's will and what he has for us. So let's take a look at verse 2 and continue to see uh, what James has to say here. He says, You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly. To spend it on your, again, on your own passions. So basically, he's saying here that we don't even ask. And if we do ask for those, those desires that we have, we ask with a selfish heart. We ask for the desires that we want, for our own gain, our will, our own selfishness is how we're asking for those things. And we are, we're all guilty of this. I know that I'm guilty of this. I have even gotten to points when I've been praying that I've convinced myself that these things that I'm praying for selfishly are actually praying God's will when in fact they weren't. They were just for my own selfish gain. And sometimes we can do that. We can convince ourselves that what we're doing and what we're praying is in, in line with God's will without even asking Him first. We just convince ourselves because we really, really, really want whatever that is or to be able to do whatever that is that we're asking, right? And so look, let's keep reading in verse 4. You adulterous people, you do not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God. Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says he yearns jealously, jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us? But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And right here, James goes a bit deeper, and he calls our selfishness out for what it truly is. And that's friendship with the world. That's aligning ourselves and our will and our security squarely in the world and not in Christ. And ultimately just posing that question of, where is our trust? That's a question we should be asking ourselves as we read this. Where is our trust? Do we trust in the world to keep us secure, to keep us safe, these things that we think are around us that we need to have in order to keep us secure? Or do we forego that and put our faith and our trust in God in all things? And that's the, the question right here that is behind this statement. And just think about that for a moment. If we're praying and asking God for something that we know is selfish and of the world, which makes us an enemy of God, that's a pretty bold and arrogant thing, very proud thing to do, to ask God to come in and bless that desire of our heart. I mean, that's, that's why later on when it says, that God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. It's because when we ask for selfish things, we are being arrogant and prideful to think that God should come into our situation and bless our own desires of the world that he opposes. So if he opposes the world and we align with the world and we're proud that he opposes the proud as well, this can simply be handled with God's grace. And if we will humble ourselves, then God is there to give us grace and mercy. And let's see what it says in verse 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. 
Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. By humbling ourselves and repenting of our own arrogance and our own pride and selfishness, we're able to receive God's grace and to rightly put our security back into Christ where it belongs. And when we do that, then God is ready to forgive us and exalt us for his glory. This is such a good reminder to all of us to examine our own hearts when we pray. I would encourage you while you're praying to ask God to examine your heart and reveal to you his will for the situation that you're in and how you can pray his will in that situation. Discuss with the group and uh, I will see you guys in the next video.